Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back, finally, to another FNAF news video. Oh my gosh, it has been a long time since we did a FNAF news video. So we have a lot of things to talk about, ranging from the games, to the books, to the fanverse initiative, to even brand new Funko products coming next year. So because we have a lot to talk about, let's not waste any more time, I do very quickly have a very big announcement to make. I got new merchandise, baby! Let's go! That's right, finally, I have brand new designs for merchandise if you want to go pick some up. We got t-shirts, we got mugs, sweatshirts, pillows, phone cases, stickers, we, we got a whole bunch of stuffs. And also this week only if you use code SUB2JB, which is also something you guys should be doing, you get 15% off. It's quite a steal. So it's linked down below. Go check out the merch if you want to go get some. And let's get on with the new starting off with the Fazbear Fright books. We are getting very close to the next Fazbear Fright book, number 10, Friendly Face, which releases on September the 7th. And we actually have a slightly updated description for the book. Originally, the main protagonist protagonist in the first story was named Andrew. However, this character has since been renamed to Edward. There's been a few Andrews in the Fazbear Frights stories previously, so I think this was maybe a mistake on their part. And then we also got the most common words and phrases in the book. As you can see, you have a lot of names like Brittany, Mindy, Edward, Jack as well, Larson, Rory, Mott, Rosie as well. And then you have the C Bonnies, which appears to be the name of the character as well as one of the stories in the book. And then, oh yeah, Fritz. Because gosh darn, of course there's a frickin' Fritz. And like I said, the book comes out in September, so we actually don't have that much longer to wait. And while we're talking about the Fazbear Frights, let's talk about the graphic novel for the Fazbear Frights series. If you forgot, the first graphic novel for the Fazbear Frights series is going to have Into the Pit to be beautiful and weirdly out of stock. I'm still not sure why they're skipping a few stories. While there are a lot of stories in the Fazbear Frights series, it seems weird to just skip some and entirely. Like, I feel like if you're gonna make a graphic novel of the stories, why not just make them all? Or if you don't want to make all the stories, then just don't make a graphic novel at all. It's a little odd, but the first graphic novel comes out on August the 2nd. Originally, it had a release date of May the 3rd, I believe, but it did get delayed to August. And then out of nowhere, we got the Five Nights at Freddy's character encyclopedia. The massive world of Five Nights at Freddy's is presented here in a beautiful horde cover that makes the perfect gift for any Freddy fan. All the animatronics, all the locations, and all the horrific artifacts from this series are laid out in awesome detail. A must-have for any FNAF fanatics. So right now, we don't really know what this book entails, besides it's going to be a very detailed description of some characters, some artifacts, and some locations. The first thing I thought of was the animatronics inventory from the Freddy Files, so it might be a more detailed look at some of the characters and again locations from the franchise. A very quick update on FNAF AR, we are still waiting for the fall updates to roll out, and in the meantime, Alumix hit us with yet another blast from the past event called the Spring Trap Spree, which has the Toxic Spring Trap, Curse, and Flaming Spring Trap skin. Definitely kind of underwhelming if you ask me, considering the fact that the last event had Freddy skins, Toy Freddy skins, and Frost Bear skins. But maybe this means that we're getting close to the fall updates. I don't know, we're just gonna have to wait and see. And for the anniversary for FNAF, we got a look at the Chica and Foxy Hex plushies. If you still don't know what Hex is, it's Darko's own brand that he has made, and they are working with Scott to make some FNAF plushies. Keep in mind that these are still prototypes, so they could change before release. I personally think that they look fantastic. I think the Chica plushie and the Cupcake all look so cute, and also Foxy has a lot of detail on him, which I love. Very quickly, I want to talk about fan games at Freddy's. If you missed my reaction to the event, I'll have it linked down below. It's basically like a Nintendo Direct, but for fan games, and they revealed a lot of great games and awesome some trailers, most notably Jolly's 4. You got Chompers, A Glitched Attraction, FNAF Power Out, Lego FNAF, Golden Memory 2, Ultra Custom Night, Rat Race Juniors, a whole bunch of games. If you want to go check out the trailers, again my reaction is linked down below, but also I'll leave a link to the playlist which has all the trailers in the description. Moving right along, let's talk about the Fanverse initiative starting off with Kane Carter's Pop Goes. Kane finally revealed the poster for Pop Goes himself on the Pop Goes Pizzeria poster. He's singing along to the music, he looks super cute. And then, 
Speaking of super cute, I don't know if this is really FNAF news, but it's cute and maybe it'll brighten up your day. Emil Mako, who is creating the Five Nights at Candy's 4 installment, actually made some artwork for it, Dancing Pop Goes and Dancing Flumpties. And finally, it's about time we have an update on the Joy of Creation Ignited Collection. Mixon, the creator, made a tweet saying, Also, I've lately had the pleasure to work in Unreal Engine 5 on Evil Nun the Broken Mask, and it's been a blast. Very fun project to work on. Can't wait to get back on Ignited Collection when that's allowed again and create my most next-gen looking FNAF project yet. So it seems like there's some contract or something that Nixon can't work on FNAF because right now he's working on other projects. And maybe I'm reading this wrong, but it seems like Nixon may make the Joy of Creation Ignited Collection in Unreal Engine 5. It seems like he's hinting at that, but I could be wrong. If that's the case, then that is gonna look absolutely freaking insane. And finally, let's talk about FNAF Plus. So I do plan on making a video going into detail all the secrets and easter eggs hidden in the Breaking and Entering trailer. So for now, I'm just gonna go over the basic news that we got. So on the anniversary for FNAF, Phil Morg posted a 13 minute trailer for FNAF Plus, which is the official reimagining of the very first FNAF game. Again, I'm gonna go into detail in a separate video, but it seems like in this game, or at least in the trailer, we take the role of a kid and we go investigating for some paranormal activity in the pizzeria. We come across the animatronics, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and also the puppet. And then Phil also posted another video called Help Wanted. And this showed off the Help Wanted newspaper clipping for Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. It says, Help Wanted, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, local pizzeria in need of night watchmen to guard the premises from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. Monday through Friday with possibility for overtime. Little to no previous work experience required. Must watch cameras ensure the safety of company property. Includes free pizza vouchers for completion of the first week on the job. Not liable for bruising, mutilations, or death. $120 a week it seems to apply. Call 1-888-FAZ-FAZBEAR. And then it also has some some bonuses at the side of the screen, but I can't quite make all those out. And the description actually has a lot of detail on the events of the game. Local pizzeria at the center of controversy yet again. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is back in the public eye this year, but not for the reasons they had hoped. As the small business was dragged into a tarrant of anger and suspicion due to alleged ties to the disappearance of a local high school student on October 9th. The young teen known to friends as a hobbyist filmmaker and described by some as a quiet but well-mannered soul, was reported missing this morning after leaving home to meet up with someone for a new project that, according to family, involved the restaurant's infamous string of incidents and general dark reputation. When pressed for comment, an intern at the establishment stated, we really had nothing to do with it. Our surveillance cameras show no one entering nor leaving the restaurant during that night, an answer that did nothing but grow more suspicion as access to aforementioned footage was immediately denied to the public. Town residents were further outraged the following week as they found multiple job flyers for the restaurant being left at their doorsteps. Yeah, so as Phil had tweeted out before the breaking and entering teaser trailer, that teaser trailer actually takes place before the events of the game. And so based off of what we see in the trailer and also the context clue in the description. I think we can safely say that this high school student snuck into the pizzeria with their dad's camcorder to film a brand new project on the night of August the 9th, and they went missing. But it's kind of weird because in the trailer we saw them zoom onto a surveillance camera, so... I'm sure Fazbear Entertainment definitely has them sneaking into the pizzeria on footage. I'm getting very excited for FNAF Plus. I don't know about you guys, but I think that this is going to be a fantastic game with a fantastic story. And also some fantastic character designs. The official FNAF Plus Twitter tweeted out a few bonus images of Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and a brand new rug. I know there's a few people who are kind of mixed on the whole character designs of FNAF Plus, but honestly, I'm a huge fan of them. I think they look absolutely terrifying, especially Bonnie in this one image. And then we got a look at a brand new room that has an arcade machine and a ball pit. Unfortunately, the arcade is out of order, as we can see with the paper that has Helpy on it. It is very Fazbear Entertainment of them to have will be fixed 
released later, maybe, on the paper. It also looks like the arcade machine is Bonnie-themed, because we can see a picture of Bonnie at the top of the machine. And then, of course, the ball pit, because it feels like everything FNAF nowadays has to have a ball pit. And then finally, we get a proper look at Foxy. I really do love the style that Phil gave Foxy. He looks absolutely terrifying. And you can see he's very, very damaged, because you can see wires poking out from behind his ear. And he also has two earrings on his ear as well. And most interestingly of all, his eyes are completely white. Now that could simply be a design of the character, but I do think it seems out of place, so I do think it has some meaning. Whether it's story driven, like, oh, he's out of order and he lost his eye, but that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Personally, I think it has something to do with his brand new mechanic in this game. Even though we did see that video from his point of view a couple months ago, you know, it wasn't the best of footage. So maybe he can can't see that well and he uses other senses like sound to listen out for you. And the other day Phil released a high res picture of FNAF plus Bonnie and my gosh dude he looks absolutely terrifying. He also shared a really fun story about how he actually got scared from this picture when he was rendering the Quiet Hours video. And the final FNAF plus news I have in this video is very interesting because I don't see a whole lot of people talking about it. So a while ago Phil made a tweet saying that you can hide secret messages in in tweets, which was kind of a weird thing to point out, and so of course a few people went looking in their tweets, and lo and behold, someone found something very interesting in the Cam 10 teaser. Apparently the room that Cam 10 is in is the electrical room, which is super interesting because we all thought that that was the East Hall corner, because Freddy in the actual FNAF 1 game has a very similar pose in that camera. Uh, but no, apparently it is the electric room. Hmm, I wonder if Freddy is going to sabotage the lights. I say that as a joke, but we did see in that one teaser video that they can maybe disable the camera, so... I don't know, man. <laughs> Freddy's looking kind of sus. And now, let's talk about the big FNAF security breach news we got on the anniversary for FNAF. Just kidding, we got nothing. Which... It's very unfortunate, I will say. So basically, Steel Wool made a tweet on the anniversary saying it's FNAF's birthday and we're all going to party till we're purple. Wow, I love being purple. And then they attached some art to the tweet. It is nice to hear from Steel Wool, but I think we can all agree that we were hoping for something else. Honestly, just like, you know, them saying, hey, still working on the game. It's going great, guys. You're gonna love it. Like, I would have taken that. Um, I'm a little disappointed. I wish we had gotten something. Again, just something tiny. Even the same thing with Scott. I know he's retired and all, but it really would have been nice to hear from him. Just check up, see how he's doing now that he's retired, see how his family's doing. And now let's talk about some crazy new info on FNAF merchandise, because apparently... We're getting new merch surprisingly sooner than we thought. Before we do that though, some people are getting their Curse of Dreadbear merchandise. I should hopefully be getting mine soon. I know some people aren't too big a fans of the plushies. I personally don't think they look that bad. So far, I haven't seen anybody get the action figures, so it seems like the plushies are the only things out right now. But yeah, the new merchandise. So apparently there's been a couple of leaks going around by very credible Funko leakers. Talking about a brand new FNAF AR merchandise wave coming in January. The first info we got on this was on August the 15th from Funko Leaker, a nerdy dad on Instagram. They say Five Nights at Freddy's action figures coming spring of 2022. And then they have an image that features System Error Toy Bonnie, Radioactive Foxy, Toxic Springtrap, and High Score Toy Chica. And then another Instagram Funko Leaker, this time Pop underscore Freak One, made a post saying that we'll also get some mystery minis. And then also doubling down that we will get action figures for those four skins, as well as a version of Freddy, unclear who this could be, though I think it's very likely that it will be VR Toy Freddy. It just makes sense because he's the only Arcade Mayhem skin that they're missing. Also, I see a lot of confusion going on with this image because I'll be honest, it's not worded the best. So far, we have no clue what we're gonna get with the mystery minis. It could be FNAF AR, it could be more security breach like Vanessa, the Moon animatronic, the Sun animatronic, Gregory, all those people. It could be Help Wanted as well. It could be anything. We don't know what the mystery minis are gonna be. And then on this image, it also says High Score Chica and System Error Bonnie. Don't worry, they're not making the Arcade Mayhem skins, the FNAF 1 characters. They are going to be the toys. This was just a shortened named for them. 
And then finally, they're also going to be getting some plushies and pops. Specifically, it's talking about the pocket pops, which are keychains. Kind of lame, so I hope that they're going to make, you know, actual pops if they're going to be making the small pops. And then also in the image, you can see it does say VR Freddy. Again, it's VR Toy Freddy. So I do think it's likely that VR Toy Freddy is the action figure of Freddy that we're going to be getting in the wave. As for the release date, I know earlier on I did say January, but there's kind of two release dates from two different sources. I'm pretty sure Pop Freak 1 said that these are coming in January, and then a nerdy dad says that they're coming in the spring, so unclear when they're actually going to be released, but most likely early next year. But that is all the news we have today. A lot of freaking news. I should probably do these a lot more often because then we get long episodes like this with a whole bunch of news. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget, check out the merchandise, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.